Okay, so uh, in this video I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to MATLAB, the programming language and programming environment. So to get started, if you go down to the options uh, down here on the left, under Science and Math you can find MATLAB, click it and it'll open up. MATLAB's a reasonably uh, common, robust, large piece of software that is commonly used by a bunch of mathematicians and engineers to create mathematical and software models of, of real world situations. Um, it shares a, a lot of similarities with the uh, interactive Python programming environment and once it's launched here's, here's an example. So um, for those of you who haven't used a, an interactive programming environment before it's just a way to kind of dynamically interact with your program so rather than writing it and then running it the program's always running and then you can change values of variables and things in it um, by, by interacting with it. So for example let's say I'm going to create a variable A give it the value 3 and I hit enter and it reports that back to me. Um, I'm going to create another variable called b and give it the value of 5 and so it doesn't say it to me I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of that line. And one of the nice things about both Python and MATLAB is I can start to do mathematical operations with those variables. So I can go a plus 2 times b and it will give me the answer. And so using that I can build up more and more complicated mathematical functions um, for some of these values. However that's not where MATLAB excels. MATLAB and, and to a certain extent Python excel with working with vectors and matrices which are topics that you've covered before but probably don't have a, a great handle on yet. So just as a reminder when I say matrices I mean a two-dimensional array in this example they don't have to be two-dimensional a two-dimensional array of numbers so let's create a really simple three by three matrix in MATLAB doing that is really simple so I use square brackets and this is going to be a three by three matrix so my first row of that matrix is going to be one two three and I separate the elements in the row by commas and then the rows from each other by um, uh, semicolons. So my second row is going to be 4, 5, 6 and my last row is going to be 7, 8, 9. So there is my array and you can see, sorry, there's my matrix and MATLAB has displayed it appropriately. Now it's pretty easy to get elements from uh, an existing matrix in MATLAB. I just use this notation here, so A and then a curved bracket. Let's say I want to get the final element, then that would be 3, comma 3 and that will return the value 9. If I want the center element that would be 2, 2 and that returns me 5 but more interestingly if I go 3, 2 you can see that gets me the second element of the third row of the matrix. Conversely if I go 2, 3 it will return me the third element of the second row. But once again getting individual numbers from a matrix isn't super helpful. What is really helpful is getting entire rows and entire columns of data from a matrix. Uh, as a reminder, while I'm just using simple matrices here, a grayscale image, so images that are entirely black or white without any gray in between, um, are just big arrays of either ones or zeros, the ones corresponding to white and the zeros corresponding to black. So I can use exactly this approach here to process entire images and that is exactly how we're going to solve this assignment later on. But for the moment let's jump back and uh, have a closer look at just our standard, um, our standard uh, matrix here. So what I've done is I've put in a colon and a colon in matrix notation means a wildcard. So this one for example means return me all the elements of the first column. If I swap the order of that around, so I put the semicolon second, it means get me all the elements from the first row. So if I wanted to get all the elements of the second row, uh, of the second column rather, I would do this. And I can very easily manipulate and change the data from um, uh, the data from a matrix. Now, the final thing you want to do in this assignment is take a matrix that you've created and write it to a file. So um, I'm going to create instead of a matrix, I'm going to create a vector uh, just to show you an example. So just a reminder, a vector is just a one-dimensional matrix. So let's create one. You can think of it as an array. So the shorthand in MATLAB to create an uh, an array is the number that you start with is where do you want the array to start. So I'm going to start my array from zero. It's going to count up in steps of two. That's what the second number is, and it's going to go to two uh, hundred and fifty. So 
if I hit enter very quickly you can see I have an element I have a have a, a, a vector sorry um, that is full of numbers that go between 0 and 250 in steps of 2 if I want to take that and write that to a file um, there is a very simple command for doing that in uh, in MATLAB which is DLM write followed by the name of the file so I'm going to call it um, vector.txt and then the name of whatever it is that I'm writing enter boom and if I uh, jump over now to my uh, console I go clear and I type cat and then vector.txt you can see there we go I've written that all out to a file now if I do that for my entire matrix um, so I'm going to go matrix a.txt and then my matrix a from before and I go back and I go matrix a.txt you can see there is my matrix from before written as a file so um, MATLAB is a really useful tool for interacting with data processing it uh, interacting with images and processing that and that's primarily what we're going to be using it for in this lab